Hi and welcome back to the next tutorial which is about connecting Shape to Hepatizer. So Shape is a separate application which you can download and install. Uh, you should have a Shape icon on your desktop. So let's just start it so you can see what it looks like. Okay, but we're going to start off with um, configuring Hepatizer. So what we want to do, we can have Shape running on one computer or the same computer and Shape is all about 3D mapping and uh, alignment. So Shape can connect via network to the Hepatizer engine and use its outputs um, to project onto 3D objects. So let's start Hepatizer and get it ready for that. Um, I manually start engine in Zookeeper So here we are. With our our default startup is to have a single mix with two layers going full screen to one of the connected monitors. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to change this into a shape render. So for that I go into configure mode. Yes, I want to stop rendering. I select my patch and unpatch it. So you can see I've got three monitors here. And we're actually on the second monitor, which is actually an output monitor, because this way I can record the output and see that in the same um, capture window. So first thing I'm going to do is add a shape um, module in here. The next task that I need to do, I need to select a source mix. Yeah, I'll use my default mix and patch that into the shape module. The next thing is I select this mix and say which output I want it to be connected to. In this instance, I use the monitor we're on, which is the um, Dell monitor here. Okay, a head patch. Now what I want to do in order to um, still see the rest of the user interface, I'm going to resize the actual um, viewport down to something really useful, just like this. I'm going to move it to the top right hand corner. So just to give you an idea, you can see in the background now it shows the shape viewport and where it sits on the monitor. Okay, let me flick back to the um, the user interface. Okay, let's hit apply config, and you'll see the rendered output of Hepatizer now sits over the top of the user interface. So, so we can see what goes on. Okay, let's go back to our mixes. Oh, we're outputting color bars, but why don't we see anything? Simple. At the moment, shape is active, but not connected. So you don't have a model, you don't have um, projectors or cameras set up. To see that everything's working correctly, I can go into viewport. Now viewport for shape looks quite different to viewport on a normal uh, hypotizer output where you have keystoning and all the other um, controls. Here you have some controls to, con to, to configure shape correctly. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to disable this. Ah, if I disable it, I can see my mix as normal. Very good. So the next thing that you need to do here is um, hook up the hypnotizer to a shape session. So in order to do that, I need to go to my shape application and start a session. As you can see, there's none available right now. So let me minimize this window and go back to shape. Here we are. So I'm not going to run through the whole of the user interface of shape, instead focus just on the tasks that we have to do to get it connected to Hepatizer. In order to demonstrate that, I'm going to create a box. You can also get it same from the um, create menu. Um, so I'm going to use the box, I'm going to select it. What I'm going to do is I'll move it back a bit and up so it sits on top of the grid. Next thing I'm going to do is create a projector. There we go. Projector I'm going to move back a bit and again up so it can see the box. Great, I've got a basic scene going. So what I can do next is actually set up the networking to create the session. Uh, let me not use the shortcuts, instead go to Tools, Network Manager. In here, 
it suggests a name for a session, Sean Tower, I can use that. And when I enable network, as soon as it's grayed out, it will um, the network's active. And this has already found um, the hypnotizer render node. Um, mainly this is because it was it before. If you do it for the first time, this list will be empty. Great. So now I can I can um, I can connect the hypnotizer to um, to the uh, session. In order to do that, I need to refresh sessions. So I scan for the sessions on the network. Now I can select Sean Tower, and now the hypnotizer is attached to the session. So next thing that I need to do is tell the hypnotizer to connect to this projector. Basically the hypnotizer is the projector, so we need to connect the two. I can do that in the output manager. Okay, you can see down here, these are my local monitors. I could use those, but I want to connect it to the, uh, to the hypnotizer. So I'll drag the hypnotizer into the plus field, into the connection field, and the projector down here. And as you can see on the output of the hypnotizer, we can that it's now activated. It's synchronized the model and the, the projector from the shape software with the hypnotizer engine. So if I now go and select the box, move it, you can see it moving on the output. Or if I select the projector and move it about, it also moves on the output. So I can now, what I can now do is pick a rotation tool. I'm going to do is I'm just going to rotate it a little bit so we can see a bit on the sides. By default, the projector is set to textured. What that means is that it uses the texture that is delivered by the hypnotizer media engine. So if I change to a different clip here, you can see it changing on the on the object. Of course, I can also use all the normal controls and they will affect how the texture is delivered to the model. Sometimes it's not useful to see um, the texture because maybe you haven't got one or you need to do alignment and lineup tasks. In that case, you can change it in the projector's settings. So for example here, I can switch to an align view. I can create a wireframe overlay or go straight to wireframe. Okay. So these, um, these options are pretty much the same as here in the view model. So I can also go to alignment, solid, textured. Ah, hang on. Yeah, because we haven't got any textures loaded in side shape, that's why it appears just as the same as the um, solid model. So now that we've got the two connected, let's play uh, with something a little more complicated, say like a house model. I'm going back and use the uh, doll's house model we've used before on uh, trade shows before. So now we don't want to save it. And then um, I use the import function to import a model. So I've got here a doll's house model. And again, I'm going to do the same as before. Just move it up and back a bit so it's not sits in our origin. I'm going to create a camera or a projector, move that back and up a bit. Okay. Because we've changed the project, created a new one, it doesn't remember that the uh, projector number one was connected to the hypnotizer. So I need to do that again. I go to Tools, Output Manager, and there's still hypnotizer one from the previous um, project, but I'll drag the projector back onto it. And as you can see, as soon as I do that, Shape synchronizes it data with the hypnotizer engine and the render plugin renders the, um, the model again with the texture on it. Um, just do remember I'm doing everything local here, but obviously when you um, doing the uh, uh, mapping project in the real world, you would do that over the network. So let's just activate the wireframe overlay. 
Um, yeah, I'm going to show two more things here, and that is how to um, add textures in Shape, and then also import media in the Hypnotizer engine. So, what I'd like to do is um, create, um, basically, I overlay a texture inside Shape. Okay, I'll go to Input Manager, click on the plus, and here are some textures that were provided for the model. So, I'm going to select a realistic one. And then I'm going to map it to a slot. This is now called texture zero. So I can now go and switch in my display to textured. But because the model hasn't got a texture yet, it appears gray. As soon as I select a texture, we can see what it looks like. Um, if you want to um, activate the free camera, hold down control and then click and move the mouse. So as you can see, and use the wheel to move in and out. Okay, so now I've textured um, a model in shape, so I get a better idea of what it looks like. Let's do the same in Hepatizer. For that, I need to load the image. Let's go to Media Manager. Right-click on Root to create a new subfolder. Right-click and rename it. Call it Shape. Now I can browse to a file, select any images or video clips, and once they're uploaded, I can map them to a bank or slot. Let's go back to the mixer, and instead of the color grid, load it. Oh, it's actually on the layer below, so as soon as I fade out, it gets mapped to the object. Let's switch back to shape and switch off the grid, the wireframe which was over the top. So I hope this little tutorial gave you an introduction into how to set up shape to talk to Hypnotizer. So you've learned about how to create a network session, how uh, Hypnotizer can discover and connect to a session, how to disable, enable the shape plugin, as well as load models and map basic textures onto the models. Please um, review the next tutorial to learn more about um, auto alignment as well as um, output post-processing. Goodbye.